Hi there, everyone! Your Pyral here with some more Pokemon Platinum. Last episode, we became the new champion of the Sinnoh region after a long and difficult battle against the former champion Cynthia. This episode, we're continuing our adventure because there's still a ton of stuff for us to do. And as you can see, upon reaching the Hall of Fame and beating the game, you're back here in Twinleaf Town. And right here, this is is where new things begin to open up to us. Max came looking for you a while ago. I don't know what it was about, but he was shouting about you needing to get on a ship at Snowpoint City. You know how impatient he is? He was gone before I could ask. Anyway, how's it going, kid? Is your project with Professor Rowan coming along? Our project with Professor Rowan is the Pokedex, if you don't remember. He asked us to see all of the Pokemon that we could see in the Sinnoh region. At least in the Sinnoh Pokedex, because I'll, I'll talk about that later, but we completed the Sinnoh Pokedex. We fought every trainer that we could find. We battled legendary Pokemon, saw some other stuff, and we did pretty much everything we could do in the main story of the game. So if you were to do that, if you were to fight every trainer that you were to see, then no matter what, you would be able to complete the Sinnoh Pokedex. Of course, you need to see things like Unknown, Rotom, the legendary Pokemon, Manaphy. But other than that, by fighting every trainer in the game, you should be all set. Anyways, let's go inside Max's house. What does, um, what does his mom have to say? Uh, let's see. Took off like a rocket as usual. You're shouting something about becoming the greatest trainer ever. He just can't sit still, that boy. I wonder who he takes after. I mean, it doesn't seem to take after you, but... I mean, probably takes after his dad. But yeah, anyways. Let's go let's go check up on Professor Rowan. So hopefully I don't get interrupted by a wild Pokemon, but this here is the start of what many people call the post game. The post game of Pokemon Platinum has a ton of stuff for us to do, and it's only just starting right now. Let's see, hi Ralph, may I see your Pokedex? Oh my gosh, you've seen every kind of Pokemon in Sinnoh! Hey, let's go share your Pokedex to Professor Rowan. I'm gonna do just that. What's up, Professor Rowan? Ah, Rao. You've come to show me your progress on the Pokedex. Hmm. So you've seen 210 Pokemon. Excellent work, Rao. The Pokemon of the Sinnoh region are being added to your Pokedex. This will certainly help with my studies of Pokemon evolution. Oh, look at this. Greetings, Professor Rowan. It's been a very long time. I'll tell you, Sinnoh certainly is a long trip from Kanto. Of course, if it means meeting a new Pokemon, there's no distance to uh, too great for the likes of us to travel. Oh, if it isn't my old colleague, Professor Oak. I should have expected this much from the world's authority on Pokemon. We always used to joke, where there are Pokemon, you'll find Oak. Now that rhymed. It's good to see that hasn't changed one bit. Professor Oak, let me introduce you to my young assistant. This youngster has failed every page of the Sinnoh Pokedex for me. At least in terms of seeing things. I haven't caught everything in the Sinnoh region. Oh, well, very glad to meet you. As you've heard, my name is Oak. I've been hearing a great deal about you from Professor Rowan lately. He's been exuberant in praise about a fantastic young trainer. I see that you live up to know that you've surpassed his praise. You've also got an impeccable sense of timing. You see, I had an errand to run for Professor Rowan on my visit here. He'd asked me to bring the data for the National Pokedex, you see. So since you're here, let me upgrade your Pokedex with the National Mode. After all, there are many kinds of Pokemon in this world of ours. So with this, we have the National Pokedex. I'm afraid it won't be easy to complete the National Pokedex. However, I'm sure you'll be, or you will make it an honest attempt. Mm, nope. Nope. Have no fear. Ral will get, mm, no, I will not get that job done. That's a lot of Pokemon. By the way, Professor Oak, we'll compel you to visit this region. Ah, yes, I've heard, I've heard that the Pal Park is now open. If I remember correctly, it's at the end of Route 221. Pal Park has a special system that attracts every imaginable kind of Pokemon from every region. I mean, kind of. I've come to make certain that system is operating properly. I really should make an effort to visit Pal Park too. Oops, I'll be late for my meeting if I don't get going. Okay, it was a pleasure seeing the both of you. Bye now. Off he goes, as busy as ever. Now, Ral, I have a gift here as your reward for completing the Sinnoh Pokedex. The Poker Radar! So the Poker Radar is an item 
that I will go over in detail a little bit later, but this will allow us to encounter some new Pokemon for us to talk about. Again, I'll talk about that later. Use it and we'll indicate grass patches where Pokemon are lurking. I prepared that to help my field assistants put together the Sin of Pokedex, but you took care of that. This can actually find other Pokemon that you can't find normally in the Sinnoh region, so technically there are more Pokemon in Sinnoh, just they're hidden with the Poke Radar. I'm sure it'll be useful for your goal of filling the National Pokedex. Yeah, anyways, the National Pokedex. Gonna briefly go over this, but... We... We're able to see a lot more Pokemon now. And we're able to see them in their quote-unquote National Dex order. The Sinnoh Pokedex, which we can just switch to here. It has its own numbering system, but the National Pokedex is the one that most people will use when it comes to talking about Pokemon. Like, Pikachu is always going to be number 25. And then, of course, there's Pokemon before that that we haven't seen. Number one is one that a lot of people know, which is Bulbasaur. But, yeah, anyways. We'll be seeing a lot of Pokemon now. A lot of Pokemon that aren't normally available to see in Sinnoh, but... That's going to be exciting. Anyways, what do you, what do your assistants have to say? See, Professor Oak has been or Professor Rowan has been studying Pokemon, uh, Pokedex systems with Professor Oak. Professor Oak is Professor Rowan's junior in terms of a, of seniority. Okay then, it's really quite something. Imagine cataloging every kind of Pokemon in the Sinnoh region, and in complete contrast, there's Dawn. Now you've been great for the Professor's Pokemon evolution research. Do you say anything else? The world is immense. There are many more Pokemon. That means there are many more thrills for you to seek and enjoy. I agree with that. I agree with that. And what about you, Don? Hey, Ra, have you ever chatted with my kid sister? So Don here is actually going to give you some little, little tips here for finding new Pokemon. But again, I'll I'll get I'll talk about those as they become more relevant to the subject. But for now. I'm just going to quickly go into the Pokemon Center, and then we'll head over to Pal Park. So, see you there. I'm just going to quickly cut. Okay, so I want to interject with this small little clip because this is being recorded the day after the first clip of this episode. But, today is a special day that I want to show off. So, today... This, this small little snippet that's being recorded, the rest of the episode is going to be filmed later. But this small little bit is being filmed on September 27th, 2021, to date the content, I guess. And this is a special day because this is my birthday. And Generation 4 is the first game, or the first set of games in the Pokemon franchise to make note of the fact that it's your birthday. Because, I mean, the DS keeps track of that, and the previous systems couldn't. But anyways, if you talk to Don or Lucas on your birthday, is today maybe your birthday, Ral? Congratulations, and many more happy returns. Thanks, I guess. I feel old because I'm 27 at the time of recording this now. But yeah, this is the first time in the series that the like that the games will make note of the fact that it's your birthday. Later games will do more things like you can go to Pokemon centers and they'll acknowledge that, but talking to Lucas or Don will just have them make note of it. And what happens if you say no? Oh, it isn't? I wonder made me think that today was your birthday. I mean, the DS keeps track of that, I guess. But yeah, today is my birthday. Anyways, let's actually get on with the meat and potatoes of the actual episode. I just wanted to show off this neat little thing because it's neat. Okay, so now we're all set to go over to Pal Park as a bit of a refresher because we've actually seen the entrance to Pal Park before. It is right down here south of Sandgem Town. Just make it over to Route 229, and follow the path until you make it to Route 221. Oh, memories of finding a shiny Floatzel here. Anyways, we do have the Poker Radar here, and I believe we can actually find a new Pokemon here, but I'm not gonna go over the new Pokemon that we can find with the Poker Radar just yet, because the main focus here is 
Pal Park, which is, again, now open to us, now that we have the National Pokedex. So, once you go inside, you're greeted by Professor Oak. And now that you've done this, Pal Park is actually now a location that you can fly to, which is very, very convenient. Ha, oh, Ralph, this is it. This is Pal Park. Pokemon from around the country can be brought here. In other words, Pokemon from places like Kanto and Hoenn. This place also happens to be where you compete to see how quickly you can catch those Pokemon. It's good to see you've come to join us for a visit. Let me make a gift of this trainer counter for your Poketch. So the trainer counter, as Professor Oak is probably going to explain right here, is an app that tracks the Poker Radar's rankings. I plan to be in Eterna City for some time. Being here, I should make the best of my time studying the Pokemon of the Sinnoh region. So like he said, he's going to be in Eterna City if we ever want to see him. But, let's talk about the trainer counter. Okay, this is the right app. So, I'm going to be talking more about the Poker Radar in depth later on, but this basically keeps track of streaks that we can do with the Poker Radar. So, how many times in a row using the Poker Radar you can find a consecutive Pokemon. So, for example, if you want to chain, like, multiple Starly for whatever reason, this will keep track of, like, your record of that. Or, like, what your highest uh, set of consecutive chains are. Which is important, I guess, if you are someone interested in shiny Pokemon. Anyways, before we uh, talk to the other people here, let's, uh... Let's go talk to the main person here. Welcome to Pal Park! This is where top-notch trainers come to demonstrate their Pokemon catching techniques to their peers. Oh? Are you maybe? You are, Ral! We've all heard rumors about you. Word is, you're a hotshot trainer. We'd be honored if you would participate in our catching shows. Sure. Yes, you agreed to participate. It's a happy day for me. Let's not waste any time. Let me explain how Pal Park works. I wrote the Pal Park manual for situations just like this. What should I explain? So the basic rules here, it's a place where you're timed on the catching of six Pokemon. You're provided with six special Pokeballs called Park Balls for the challenge. Participa uh, participating trainers are required to supply the six Pokemon that are to be caught. Okay, if you do not supply the stock of six Pokemon, you may not participate in the catching show. So the catching show is where we catch those six Pokemon. That's it? Really? Okay. So stocking Pokemon, this is where things get interesting. You may make Pokemon migrate from Kanto or Hoenn. Doing so will stock your catching game. Insert a Game Boy Advance Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, or Leaf Green into the game pack slot. So this is only relevant if you're playing this on a Nintendo DS or a DS Lite. I'm playing my copy of Platinum on a 3DS, so there's no GBA slot, but... This will let you migrate Pokemon from any of those six games as long as they are in a PC box. When your DS is turned on, currently caught Pokemon can migrate from the game pack to the DS card. So anytime after you get the National Pokedex and you have any of those GBA games inserted, when you go to boot up the game before you hit continue on the menu, you can see an option to migrate from whatever GBA game is currently connected to your DS. So if you want to migrate Pokemon from Fire Red, then you can do so. You can migrate Pokemon up to six at a time, and there is a limit to this. So you can only do this once a day per game. So if you have multiple games, if you have like Fire Red and Emerald and Leaf Green, you can migrate six times or three times, or so six Pokemon, three times, one from one set of six from each of those games, once per day. Now there are ways to manipulate this, like by manipulating the time of your DS, so having it roll over to the next day. But yeah, time travel shenanigans and manipulating are a thing you could do to migrate multiple times per day. There's other things that you could do with inserting a GBA cartridge to a DS, but I'll talk about that more in depth and actually we can take part in the catching show right now so i managed to import some pokemon here here are your park balls current record of max has participated in this i guess i guess he played one of those games or something but 2000 points is the default score you're graded on how fast you can capture each of the pokemon and i believe it the pokemon that you migrate does have an impact on your score as well. So if you like were to import common Pokemon like 
Pidgey or something, your score would be less, just because they are easy to find Pokemon. But if you were to import something like, say, Legendary Pokemon, then you get more points. Hey, off you go, Rao. Dazzle us with a massive display of Pokemon catching. Also, um, I just like the music that plays in the catching show. It's the same music that plays when you're in the Great Marsh. But I just associate it more with this, because I did this a lot when I was younger. Anyways, the Pokemon that I imported. One of them can be found right here. Come on. Come on. I know you're here. There you are. It's a Gardevoir named Ionia. So the Park Ball, when you, uh, when you throw it, it's going to be an instant catch. And they're only available here for the catching shows. One thing I like about the Park Ball is its design. Like the top of it is gold, the bottom of it is silver, and then the middle, like the, the band in between is like a light blue crystal color. Nice little reference to the Johto games. Anyways, there's three Pokemon for me to find here. Now, Pal Park is divided into separate areas. The first area that I was in, hello, Arios, was the field. There's a forest section right above. Actually, before I uh, go catch the other Pokemon here, I might as well go over the areas that are here. The areas that you, uh, or each Pokemon that you migrate, depending on the species, will be in one of the six areas that are here. So that is something to keep in mind. So this here is the mountain area. This here is the sea. And then here is the field that I was in. This here is the forest area. And then right here to the northeast is the pond. Again, the Pokemon that you migrate, but, uh, depending on their species, will be in one of these areas. Now here is a Hariyama named Bo. So, these Pokemon might look familiar to you if you have seen any of my past Let's Plays. Specifically, Pokemon Emerald. And whenever you migrate a Pokemon, I, I want to mention, uh, they will keep their... Their moves, their experience, their stats, their effort values, their IVs, and whatever held items that they were holding at the time. All of that gets carried over to when they get migrated to to your DS game. They can be migrated like to Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. And what I find funny is when you migrate a Pokemon to um to Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Pal Park in those games are in Kanto, so if you're migrating like a Pokemon from Fire Red and Leaf Green to Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they're going from Kanto to Kanto. I just think that that's funny, but I guess like those games do take place three years after, so I don't know. It's weird. Vesuvius is now back. But yeah, this uh, the Pokemon that I caught here, or that I'm catching, is the team that I used in my Let's Play of Pokemon Emerald. Just a nice little cameo for them. And the last two can be found here. Okay, there's Padsy. Gosh. Just seeing Padsy here in Pokemon Platinum with Cosmos. Gosh, the, the references. The references to old inspirations of mine. Well, it's nice to, to have you here. And there's only one more Pokemon left for us to catch. Only one more. And we're saving the best for last, in my opinion. I know you're here. Come on. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Come on, I know you're here. Stop hiding from me. Please? Please? I know you're in the pond area. Come on. There we go. Last but not least is Axel. It's just really cool. Axel is a Swampert. Swampert's my favorite Pokemon. 
Welcome back. I just... I really like this feature of being able to migrate Pokemon from from the GBA games. And through, through more shenanigans, it is possible to get them to to later generations. It's a way of having them continue to just persist. But yeah, I have a lot of fond memories of this team. Let's see, what's my uh, score here? You do get items depending on what your score is. Catching points 470, time points 1408, type points 1150, 3028 points. I probably could have done better if I wasn't like dawdling around, but oh well. Oh well. Let's put them back in the PC boxes. And the game will automatically, or does it automatically save? No. Well, anyways, let's just take a look at my old team. For those that haven't watched Pokemon Emerald, this, I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler for that Let's Play, but this is my team. I don't plan on using this team or anything. This is just a nice little cameo for them, but they're here. Their moves are a little bit different because when you migrate a Pokemon over, they can't have any HMs. I guess this is just to prevent you from not, like, soft-locking yourself or anything. But this is the moves that they had, we're not counting HMs. I really miss this team. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see them again. And... There we go. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to keep the items on them, just because that, like, these were the items that they had beforehand. So it feels a bit wrong to just take them away from them after they've traveled all the way over here to Sinnoh. But anyways, let's just uh, talk to you. Yes, I, I can top that. That is me. I can top my score. You! Pal Park is so scintillating. Trainers and Pokemon are so full of intensity here. I've never seen some Pokemon. Would you show me if you had one? Let me see. A Pokemon that does nothing but eat and sleep. What was that Pokemon's name now? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Well, let me just go into the PC because I thought ahead here. And I happen to have that Pokemon. I didn't catch it here. I, I traded it, but <laughs> here you go. And I'm also going to take this Pokemon, because this is also going to be useful as well. But if you have a Snorlax and you talk to this lady, then she will give you a reward. Trainers Pokemon, okay, yes, yes. I have Snorlax here. Honestly, the best way to get a Snorlax would probably just be to migrate one from Fire Red or Leaf Green, just because you can catch two in that game. And then you can use that to breed for a Munchlax. That's an easy way to get Munchlax, if you have the the tools necessary to do so. But she gives us the Kitchen Timer app. It's a 99 minute Kitchen Timer. Neat. And now... Is that it? Okay, let me just leave and come back because you have another thing for us. So now, after that, if you happen to have a Pokemon that changes color whenever something happens, which is Kecleon, you can actually catch Kecleon here in this game, but I figured why not just trade one over from my other copy of Platinum just to show it right now. But we get the Color Changer Poketch app, which lets us change the Poketch's color. So let's uh, talk about those apps quickly. So this one, we can just set like a little timer here and then just press start and it'll count down from like the 20 minutes that I set or whatever time you set. And then when it reaches, when it reaches zero, Snorlax stops or starts just like pounding on its stomach, which is neat. And now the color changer app is really cool. I wish this was available like right from the beginning, but whatever. Let's you just change the color of the display on the Poketch. Really cool, and I'm actually going to use this to change to this color, just because. And that's actually the very last Pokechat for us to get in this game.
But I do want to note that there are two Poke Traps that are in the game's data. They're just not available. And also, uh, this one, the Matchup Checker, this was only available in Platinum. It's not available in Diamond and Pearl. I think I mentioned that before, but... Yeah. This was in the code for Diamond and Pearl, but... No way to get it legitimately. The other two apps that are in this game's data, but can't be obtained through normal means, there's a stopwatch app, where, like, it's the displays of a Voltorb, and then you just hold the Voltorb to reset it. And then the one after that is an alarm clock, which features a Loudred. And the only way to... or the way that works is you just set a time on your DS through that app, and then it will, uh... I think it, like, makes a noise or something. I don't know. But... I mean, the original DS did have an alarm clock feature anyway, so it was kind of unnecessary. But... Still cool. Anyways, there's still some, uh, NPCs to talk to here. I've heard trainers complain that rare Pokemon take longer. Yes! Now, through Pal Park, this is the only way to get some Pokemon in the game. Or in, uh, in Platinum. And between... Between, uh, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver, the only... Like, you can actually catch all the Pokemon between those games. But, like, before Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out, uh, this game, like, Platinum being the most recent fourth generation game at the time, the only Pokemon that weren't available that you had to transfer from any of the GBA games was the starters from... Or the, the Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn starters. And legendary Pokemon. And mythical Pokemon as well, but... Other than that, if you... After Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out, you could conceivably get all of the Pokemon in those games. Except for mythical Pokemon. So... That's a thing. People come here not only to see the catching show, we get to see rare and exotic Pokemon on top of the catches. The excitement gets me all jacked up. Okay then. My daughter is a big fan of yours. A day doesn't go by without her demand. Well, this is the only catching show she's gonna see. And it's already over. Yeah. Sorry. It, it's not starting. There's not gonna be another one. I'm sorry. Now this lady here. It's a head-on clash of will and wits between train and Pokemon. I especially look forward to seeing Pokemon from Kanto and Hoenn. But it tugs my heart streaks to know that they're far away from home. Well... At, at least with the team I migrated over. I mean... Home isn't really a destination, it's who they're with. Now this lady, if you're playing on a DS with a GBA game inserted, she will actually give you some various items. She will give you contest backdrops if you have Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald here. And those backdrops are actually a reference to the legendary Pokemon mascots of those games. There's like a volcano background, an underwater background, and a sky background. And if you have Fire Red, she'll give you a crown accessory, and then Leaf Green will get you a tiara. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, with that done, that's, uh, that's really it. The post game is now started, officially, and next time, there's still some stuff for us to do here in Sinnoh, and we'll start doing that before we go on over to see what Max is up to. But on the subject of migrating my Emerald team over to this game, let me tell you what that means to me. Bringing my team over is something that I see as a physical representation of holding on to memories. I grew up with Pokemon since the tail end of Generation 1 with Pokemon Yellow, and when Emerald came out, it was around that time that many of my childhood friends stopped playing the games, and it suddenly became the uncool thing to like Pokemon. That didn't stop me though, and I've stuck with the series to this day. While the transition from Diamond and Pearl to Platinum was where I became a teenager, I saw Emerald as the last game of my childhood. The Emerald Let's Play reminded me of just how much fun I had playing Pokemon as a kid, and in a way, my team is a reminder of those feelings from that Let's Play. And when I say that bringing my team over is a physical representation of holding on to memories, I mean that it's holding on to those childhood memories. And also, they're associated with the Let's Play itself, obviously. The Emerald Let's Play came out towards the end of 2015, 
which was a year where many important things happened and were pivotal in shaping me after how dark the end of 2014 and the beginning of 2015 were. Even if the Emerald Let's Play didn't influence those outside factors, the happiness I felt from them, at least to me, can be felt throughout that Let's Play, and that team not only is a reminder of the fun I had during my childhood, but also it's a reminder of that time of happiness that I felt. Does that make sense? It does in my head, and I'm sorry if this just comes across as rambly, but Pokemon continues to be an important aspect of my life ever since I was a kid, and it's a driving force in who I am as a person. Not just the games, but the friendships and experiences I've had due to Pokemon. And even if those experiences, like making videos, are loosely related, I, I just have a lot to thank for because of Pokemon, and I can't imagine what my life would be like without those important memories pushing me forward. I don't know, this is all just super cheesy for just bringing over just these six fellas, but that and Pokemon mean more to me than I think I can ever eloquently explain. I don't know. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and see y'all next time for some more Pokemon Platinum. Later.